We have Jim Schwartz here. If you want to raise your hand, we'll get to your questions. First question looks like it's coming from Chris. Hey, Jim. Um, you obviously saw Matthew Stafford at a very young age in terms of his NFL career. How have you seen him develop and how does he how does his skill set fit so well within the um within the Rams offense? Well, he's he's one of the best throwers of the football, um, number one in the league right now, but in his era. Um, just an arm that can make all the throws, an arm that can um drop different arm arm angles, has tremendous accuracy, has great command of the offense. Um, really good at threatening the whole field. He's really good with his eyes looking defenders off, you know, the the sort of the no-look pass thing that gets a lot of attention from different quarterbacks in the league. Um, you know, Matthew's been doing that for a long time. You know, I'm proud of where he's where he's gone. Um, you know, he's he's developed not just as a player, but as a leader. And um, we're about to play our very best on Sunday to to come out with a win. Thanks. All right, next we'll go to Dan. Hey, Jim. Um, I wanted to ask you about MJ um, Emerson and just sort of, you know, how has he grown, not just as a player since you've gotten here, but how has he kind of become a leader in that room? Yeah, you know, um, that that's one of the things that I've been really happy to see is his development, showing a little bit more personality. And um, he brings a lot of excitement. He brings a lot of energy. He's really good with the other players on the sideline. And I think that's been um, that's something he has grown into, particularly this year. And I think a lot of it comes from playing well. You know, when when you're out there, when, if if you're struggling as a player, it's hard for you to, you know, bring a lot of energy and to, you know, pick the other guys up. But he's playing at a really high level. Um, I'm proud of the way his tackling has improved. You know, he had some well-documented misses early in the season. Um, but he's a resilient player like you have to be a corner. And um, I think he's on, you know, he's he's already a, a really good player in this league. I think he's well on his way to becoming a, a great player and uh, one of the top corners in the league. And obviously you have so many different body types in that room. When you have a guy like that who almost looks like a safety, how, how valuable of an asset is that for you as a coordinator? Yeah, you know, he's got long arms, um, you know, he's big, but, you know, I wouldn't just put him on like, you know, just being a, a big corner. Um, he's covered a lot of smaller shifty guys this year, too, um, you know, from from the very beginning. So, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, it, we, we do have some different body uh, shapes and things like that. Denzel's different than MJ is different than Newsom. Um you know, but, you know, I think all of them have um, embraced what we've asked them to do, which is, you know, um, um, be in the one on one spotlight and, um, you know, and 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 not be and not shy away from those one on one matchups. And, you know, he's playing with more and more confidence as we go. It, it's really hard to believe he's only a second year player right now. Thank you. All right. Next, we'll go to Fred. Hey, Jim, I want to ask about Jeremiah. He looked like he really played well last week. I wanted to see if you assessed, thought it was maybe his best game of the year. And is it the the scheme that's kind of unlocked his playmaking abilities? Um, well, he played seven and four, so, you know, we'll keep it at that. But, you know, I, you, you generally don't want to point to individual performances when you lose a game. But I think that might be an exception right there, 12 tackles. Um, two tackles for a loss, a sack, a forced fumble, um, really all over the field for us. And, um, you know, and, and we need him to play that way down the stretch, you know. And I, I think the thing I'm proudest of with Jeremiah is his ability now, and I think it's he's growing into this, to put bad plays behind him. Nobody goes out and goes, you know, 60 for 60 on their play chart. You're going to have some rough spots in there. And, you know, there were some times early in the season where he would let one mistake sort of snowball and it would become two mistakes and three and, you know, and it, it would get him down. But, 
Um, the thing, the thing I was most pleased with with the way he played was was not his production on the field. It was his ability, um, along with Jason Tarver, to make corrections on the sideline and um, and to put some you know mistakes and things like that behind him. And I think, um, you know, that's that's probably the thing that stood out the most for me. For me. But, you know, his speed, his instincts, um, he's much improved in the pass game, not just his pass rusher, but in his pass zones. Um, like I said, we're going to need performances like that. We're getting late in the season. Games become more and more important. And, um, you know, the more Jeremiah can do things for that uh, for us or do things like that for us, um, the better the better position we'll be in going down the stretch. Thank you. All right, next we'll go to Mary Kay. Uh, yeah, Jim, uh, I watched Miles, you know, battling it out over there on the sidelines a little bit yesterday, you know, trying to stretch and sprint and, and rally a little bit. So, you know, we don't have Kevin today, so I don't know what you can tell us about how Miles is doing, what his mindset is like, but, uh, you know, we've watched him play uh, you know, really hurt in the past. And uh, he seems determined to do so again. So I don't know what you can share about where he is at with everything right now. Yeah, probably not much. I'll leave that up to Kevin, but I will just talk on what I've seen from Miles. And, um, you know, I think that's that's something that maybe flies below the, um, you know, the radar nationally with him a little bit is his toughness and his ability to play through some um, some injuries. Um, He's going to work really hard to get back and, you know, we'll be prepared for everything, everything and then everything in between. So, you know, we'll be prepared if he's not able to make it. We'll be prepared if he's able to go and play every single snap in the game. We'll be prepared if he just has a certain role in the game. Um, he feels a tremendous amount of responsibility to be on the field. He's he's wired that way. He wants to be out there, and um, I know this. If there's any chance that he can, um, he'll be productive once he is. Thank you. All right, next one from Scott. Hey, Jim, what was your main message to the guys after that Broncos game? Um, yeah, you know, honestly, it seems like it was like a month ago. Uh, I don't, you know, just just the way the travels worked and everything else. I think probably the biggest thing is we missed – we missed three or four chances to really take that game under control, you know, and um, whether it was, you know, a short yardage play where they barely got a first down or a pass interference play or after a turnover on offense ability to, you know, to, to, to get off the field, which, which we did, I think second, second, um, second series of the game, you know, went out, they were at midfield, they took a shot, we defended it really well, came back, film for a lost yardage play on the run, got off the field on third down. We need more of that stuff. And, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, there, there were there were just some chances that we could have really taken advantage of. There were some missed opportunities, some missed opportunities for sacks, right? We let Russell escape a couple times and run through some arm tackles and things like that. And, you know, um, we make those plays and we feel a lot better about ourselves. And we expect that from ourselves. We expect to be able to finish and get the quarterback on the ground, get off the field on third down. That what that wasn't our best third down um, um, performance of the year. And, you know, a lot had to do with, you know, not being able to get the quarterback down. They didn't throw it a ton in the game. But when we had chances to be able to to make some tackles for losses or some sacks and put them in some longer yardage situations or win on third down, we sort of let those opportunities slip um, through our fingers a little bit. Um, you know, that's probably that's probably the biggest takeaway. And then Stafford was talking to reporters in L.A. yesterday, I think, and he said you're analytical, but also feel the game and you call it from your gut. Like, do you think do you agree with that assessment? Um, You know, um you know, we we all we all try to be analytical and and take in as much information. I think that's probably the definition of analytical is you're you're analyzing, you're using information. Um, but yeah, the things like that don't happen in a in a vacuum. You know, that's one of the reasons I like to be down on the field. I try to be in the middle of practice. I think you really have to feel the players, and you know, it's not it's not so much my gut; it's uh, my reaction to what is happening with the players 
So I think you have to be wired into that. It's not really how I'm feeling in the game. It's how the players are in my ability to process that. So, um, you know, all that goes into coaching. It goes in play calling on, on game day and, um, you know, all those things. And when it's all said and done, we're just trying to do whatever we can to, you know, to, to limit scoring, to, um, you know, get off the field on third down and uh, come out with a win. And hopefully we can do those things, whether it's, you know, because of analytics or information or because of, you know, just a, a feeling out there. Thanks. All right. And last one from Tony. Uh, Jim, the defense first, uh, at home versus the defense on the road. What do you think's going on there? There seem to be a big difference in some of the numbers. Yeah, um, really not 100 percent sure. I mean, obviously, the home crowd helps us. It helps our pass rush. Um, we feed off of the excitement from the crowd. I think we we they both we we provide energy both ways. We provide them some energy. They provide us some energy. I think the biggest thing on the road is the a little bit like I talked about before. Um, we've had chances to take games under control, and we've just missed those opportunities. Um, you know, this game, you know, is is half your games are going to be played on your road on the road. And, um, you know, we need to come out with road wins. We understand that. We know that. And uh, and particularly, like I said before, as you get late in the season, um, you know, winning road games are, um, you know, important to where we want to be. So, you know, we're trying to play our best every single game, regardless of home or away. Um, but it is something that's on our radar and something that we do need to perform better on the uh, on the road. And one other thing, uh, you play your corners right and left, pretty much it looks like. Um, is there any chance if Ward is out, you might adjust that? Yeah, you know, we, we've we we've matched at different times this year. Maybe it's gone a little bit below the radar, um, but we've had times, um, you know, that we've matched and flip sides and and different things like that. Um, it really just goes on a, on a game-by-game basis. You know, it used to be a little bit easier to match receivers, Tony, when everybody was lining up in two backs and there wasn't a ton of motion. But, you know, now the stuff with all the stacks and all the hot motions going back and forth and the jet motions and things like that, offenses have really made it difficult to, you know, to to just lock on to one guy. So, you know, a lot of times that's that's where we end up playing right and left and playing the guys and and, you know, whether Denzel's in there or not, we have confidence in our corners, our corners, particularly, particularly Greg, he knows he didn't play his best game against Denver. Um, and, and he, he has a lot of pride as a player. He has a lot of confidence as a player and I would expect him to bounce back well in this game. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. That wraps us up. Thanks, Jim. Okay, guys.